I'm Derek Noel. I'm a pastor here in Cleveland, Ohio. I pastor the Perfect Peace Baptist Church at 12001 Shaker Boulevard, just, I guess it would be west of Shaker Square. Now, I wanted to speak with you for a few moments about the things as they are happening in our world as we speak. Here we are in the middle of the month of May. And I declare unto you, dear friends, that we have a problem that God is trying to bring to our attention, but we are not listening. Let me see if I can articulate it this way. Have you noticed the inclement weather? For example, the month of April, we set records for rainfall here in northeastern Ohio. We saw all the tornadoes. Normally, there are about 200 tornadoes that would come through the south through Tornado Alley, but we had more than 640 of them this year. And we saw that tornado that ripped up Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and went through three, st three states. We've never seen such behavior from tornadoes. And then we see what's going on right now with the mighty Mississippi River setting records, records that have been kept since we have been keeping records over a hundred years, and now we see the Mississippi River overflowing its banks in a way that we have never seen before. They say last summer was the hottest summer on record. And then we see the drought in Texas. Texas now is drier than it has ever been. And don't you know that they are responsible for the growth of two-thirds of our winter red wheat here in America? So friends, what I'm saying to you is that if we look in the Bible, for example, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7, allow me to read one verse. The Bible says, I form the light. This is God speaking. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. When he said he creates evil, the word that is used there, the Hebrew word, is ra. It means that God brings natural disasters or calamities upon the planet to get man's attention. And dear friends, let me tell you, we're nearing the end of the church age. So what God is doing with this, these weather patterns, for example, the, the, the earthquake in Haiti and the earthquake in, in Japan that triggered the tsunami and, and the nuclear power crisis that they're having in Japan, that is merely God trying to get our attention to tell us that we should seek his way of salvation now. And I'm going to share this with you. When we look at the weather, we can see, looking through the Bible, and the Bible is a history book, we see through the Bible that God has always used weather to get man's attention. But not only so, but men always paid attention to what God was doing. In other words, when we look at a famine in the time of King David, David inquired of the Lord. Why are we having these famines, O Lord? And the Lord told him it was because of someone particular sin. Saul had killed the Gibeonites, so God told him how to rectify it, and then he brought rain. We look back in the time of Elijah. It was a time of great wickedness when Ahab was the king and Jezebel, his wife, was a very wicked woman, and they, God was displeased with the nation of Israel. So what God did, he sent a drought. And we saw that with that drought, it lasted three and a half years. And when it was time, God lifted the drought. And we also see God sending a flood. Remember, there was a flood of monumental proportion. Huh? It was a global event okay, that occurred in the time of Noah. It was because God was displeased with man. So we can see a pattern of behavior from the Lord our God. If he wants to get man's attention, he will bring calamities so that man will look and ask, what is it exactly do you want of us, O oh God? An insurance company today, if a tree falls on your house or, or floods come and your foundation erodes, they call it an act of God. So if an insurance company all right, that is responsible for handling your claims are calling it an act of God, why shouldn't we? individuals who are experiencing it see it as an act of God. So here is what God is trying to say to us. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Okay, that's what God is saying. You know what the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, here's what you need to understand. Whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ is not condemned. But whosoever believeth not is condemned already. 
You see, here is the problem that we have, dear friends, and here is why God, in his own sovereign will, is trying to reach us. You see, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 12, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And that is one thing that we know for sure. Every one of us are sinners, and consequently, every one of us must die. And that is our problem. But the problem is not just physical death. Your sin will give you a permanent state of separation from the Lord our God. So he has a remedy for that, and that remedy is nothing that you can do for yourself to obtain. What he said is that I'm going to send Jesus, and he is going to go to Calvary, and he's going to die on that cross for your sins. Remember, Jesus had no sin, so it was the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. So he died on that cross. He shed his blood to wash away our sins. He was buried and he arose again from the dead. You heard the story probably hundreds of times. But here is the, here is the rub. God the Father said, in order for you to inherit everlasting life, you have to believe that story, that he died on the cross according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And if you believe that, you see, the faith that you put in that act will be accounted to you for righteousness. And now you have enough righteousness to get saved. So just believing the story of the gospel, you can go to Jesus in prayer, confessing your sins, all right, and he will wash away your sins and the Holy Spirit will take up residence. It's as simple as that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's that simple. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple, okay? If it was more complicated, nobody would be saved. But as simple as the gospel is, do you believe that most people are going to go to hell? It's too profound. I mean, it's too easy. God loves you. So if you want to be saved right now, I'm inviting you to pray with me and give your heart to Jesus Christ. And I assure you, you will be saved. It is what the Bible says. Everywhere we turn, it says the same thing. I want you to pray this prayer with me. That is, if you believe that Jesus died, was buried, and arose again from the dead. Well, just pray this prayer. What do you have to lose? You have everything to gain. But if you fail to pray this prayer at some point and acknowledging him as Lord and God, the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And the alternative is terrible because then you would end up at the great white throne judgment and everyone who goes there is condemned to hell. But we are not going to go there. We're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. When the rapture comes, which is the next major event to unfold, when the rapture comes, we will go to the ju judgment seat of Christ or the Bema seat, and there we will be rewarded, and we will see one another, and we will have a wonderful reunion, and we will go to heaven for seven years until Christ comes back to the earth. But I want you to accept Christ now by praying this prayer with me and giving your heart to Jesus Christ. Father God. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to confirm your love for me. Lord Jesus, I believe in your virgin birth. I believe you lived a sinless life. I believe you went to Calvary's cross, and I believe you died for my sins in my place. Thank you for shedding your blood to wash away my sins. I believe you were buried, and I believe you arose from the dead on the third day. And I'm confessing my sins to you, and I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins and save my soul. Please, Lord Jesus, wash me and cleanse me. And then give me your spirit to convict me when I sin, to burden me to do your will. And then thank you for saving my soul. And I know we will spend eternity together in heaven. Thank you, Father, for drawing me unto your son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my humble prayer, forgiving my sins and saving my soul. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then you are born again. You're not going to feel anything immediately, 
but there is a hunger that is awakened inside of you as newborn babes are brought home from the hospital and they cry when they are hungry. The Bible says, as children of God, spiritual children, we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. So God bless you. What Christ has done, no one can separate us from. So if you are ever asked again, are you saved? The answer is clearly yes. How do you know? Because I believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried, and that he arose again from the dead, and I asked him to save my soul. May God bless you, and I will see you soon.